Hi, I welcome you to this learning session on IFRS for SMEs. We're going to have a discussion about property planned and equipment in this session. Let's move towards the learning outcomes. After completing this video, you will have an understanding about the following four areas. The first one, we will have an understanding about the scope of the IFRS for SMEs in respect of uh, property plant and equipment. Then we will have an understanding about the definition of a PPNE and how it is different from, in, let me tell you, in all these cases, we will have a difference between the IFRS full IFRS basically, we will understand what's the difference between the IFRS for the SMEs and the full IFRS that is uh, IAS 16. Then we will go through the recognition criteria and we will understand the initial measurement, how we can measure the PPNE initially uh, when we record PPNE for the first time. So let's move on to the first topic that is scope of the PPNE. So under IFRS for SMEs, the, the scope of SMEs is same as, as the full IFRS, that is IAS 16. So basically section, six, section 17, if I will be saying, section 17 of the IFRS for SMEs deals with PPNE. So whenever there is any question, there, whenever there is any um, guidance that we need, we will refer se section 17. So section 17 applies to the accounting for the PPNE and investment properties. In case of those investment properties whose value cannot whose fair value cannot be measured using undue cost and effort. If there is we are not able to measure the measure the fair value of the PPNE with with the reliability or through reasonable cost and efforts, then we need to measure it at cost and then in such a case we have to look into section 17 else there's a separate section section 16 which deals with investment properties under the ifrs the same thing is there the ppn is accounted for under ifrs under ias 16 and uh, any other standard permits so basically there is no major difference here there is no major difference here. The second point, we will understand the definition of uh, PPNE because when we say something that we are accounting PPNE, we need to understand why. Sorry, what do you mean by PPNE under the definition or as per the definition provided by the IFRS? And we will look into the both IFRS for full IFRS and for the IFRS for the SMEs. So let me tell you, under IFRS for SMEs, PPNE means those tangible assets that are held for use in the production or for supply of services, for rental to others, for administrative purposes, and expected to have a um, use duration of more than one year. I think it looks the similar which is given in the IES 16. I hope so. Let's understand what's given in the IES 16. This is per IAS 16, which means the full IFRS. The property plan and equipment are tangible assets that held by held for the use in the production or supply of goods and services. My God, it's the same as the first topic that we discuss here. For administrative purposes, cool, and expected to be used for more than one year. My God, both are same, which means there is no difference in respect of the definition for. PPNE between the full IFRS and between the new, sorry, between the IFRS for the SMEs. Let's move on and let's understand a recognition of PPNE. So this specify when we can recognize PPE in the books. Here there's a twist and which is applicable for both of them. The twist is applicable for both of them. So uh, let's understand what is there before the twist, which means let's understand before there is any change. I think you're getting my point. Before there is any amendment to the framework. So there, there is an amendment. And let's understand first what's there before the amendment, what, what, what it was there before the amendment. 
An entity should recognize the cost of an asset when it is possible that the future economic benefit will flow to the entity and the cost can be reliably measured. Point one and point two. And let's understand the full IFRS. Um, it is probable that the future economy associated with the item will flow to the entity and the cost can be derived. Oh my God. These are same. So there is no difference. There's no difference between the IFRS for the SMEs and the IFRS in respect of recognition of the property plan and equipment. But my friend, there is an amendment in the recognition of any asset in the conceptual framework itself. We do not need to go into these details. There are subjectivity involved in the recognition of it, of the of any asset, and which which we need to look into. And in such a case, I would recommend to rather than going by this definition, you need to go by the definition provided by the framework read this definition and which will be applicable for both of them because there is no specifically uh, the isb does not come come with any specific way that uh, this is not applicable for the ifrs for smes so then in such a case go through the framework first read the recognition criteria and apply the recognition criteria for ppne for both of these for the ifrs for the smes and for the full ifrs now let's look into the initial measurement path here is the twist the thing is under the ifrs for smes i will tell you the difference i under the ifrs for smes the borrowing cost the borrowing costs do not form part of the cost of an asset under ppne which means previously when you when you read the IFRS, full IFRS, you will come across a standard called IAS, I believe it's 22, relating to borrowing um, cost. In such a case, under this IFRS, we can capitalize some portion of the borrowing cost, and I believe you need to go through IAS 22 in respect to understanding the criteria, but, but, thing is under the full ifrs there are interest component which are capitalized but here under the ifrs for smes there is no capitalization of any interest expenditures or any interest costs they have to be expended there is no capitalization of the borrowing costs so to summarize to summarize all of them there is no difference between here all these points all three points there is no difference but when we read about the initial measurement the borrowing cost is not capitalized borrowing cost is not at all capitalized and i would recommend here to read the amendment to conceptual um framework to the ifrs so that's it that's it from my part if you have any questions or suggestions please feel free to post in the comment section thanks a lot